color control, and ability to add a designer touch has made the ink especially popular for use in product packaging. Right now, this special material is mostly being used for makeup cases like this. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? And the material is particularly suited to application to reflective surfaces. So there are a number of other potential uses, including things like cell phone cases or other electronics. This major textile manufacturer is actively developing cutting-edge nanofiber technology, for which they've found some particularly interesting practical uses. Well, if you wear glasses like me, you've probably got a nanofiber lens cloth like this one. This company has come up with a number of other interesting uses for nanofiber technology. Let's take a look. First, there's this facial washcloth made from polyester fibers with a diameter of 700 nanometers. Specially woven nanofibers create increased friction, giving these gloves a firm grip. Nanofibers can be so densely woven that almost no light can get through, perfect for parasols. So, is there any limit to nanofibers' potential? ま、this subsidiary of a pharmaceutical company makes measuring and inspection equipment. Well, it's pretty hard to tell what this device is for just by looking at it. It's actually capable of measuring things on a 10 nanometer scale, which is almost unimaginably small. This film thickness monitor is indispensable in the manufacture of semiconductors and optical films. Using just this machine and a laptop computer, it's possible to accurately measure films and coatings over a broad range of thicknesses. Let's see how it works by measuring this silicone wafer. The device features a non-contact, non-destructive measurement technique that provides a means to measure films on delicate components without damaging them. Finally, let's take a look at a practical application for a new material that's being developed by a Japanese government research institute. The material, known as graphene, is incredibly thin, lightweight and durable, as well as highly electrically conductive. Thanks to their original technology, which allows application of a thin graphene layer at relatively low temperatures, they're developing a thin transparent heating element that's flexible and can heat up rapidly. Possible applications include automotive windshields and traffic signals. So let's find out a little bit more about this interesting new technology. え、え、Well, nanotechnology is definitely important for the future. But by its very nature, it's really too small to see. And after all, this is TV. But we were able to find some really great examples of potential uses, like those super grippy gloves. And as soon as I saw the carbon nanotube butterfly, the first thing I thought of was muscles for robots. And according to the developer I talked to, it's actually not outside the realm of possibility, which is great news for me. That's all for today. I'm Brian Hughes reporting. See you next time. Thanks, Brian. Nanotech 2014 was billed as the world's largest nanotechnology exhibition and conference. Maybe they should have called it Mega Nanotech. No? Okay. It's almost impossible to comprehend how small a nanometer is. It's a billionth of a meter. A human hair is about 100,000 nanometers wide. The subject of the final installment in our trio of truly tiny things is also measured in nanometers. It's not a microbe or a machine. 
It's just a little air bubble. You might be asking, other than spritzing up a champagne, what possible use could we have for nanobubbles? Well, let's find out. Here, eight meters under the sea, we found something out of the ordinary. What looks like white liquid is actually seawater that contains small air bubbles, which in turn produce even smaller bubbles. These so-called nanobubbles are the focus of a lot of attention, as they are part of a new system that can help restore aquatic life to a healthier state. Let's see how the nanobubbles are produced in a small water tank. A jet of water is coming out from the pump on the left. Once it's plunged into the water, this small nozzle produces micron-sized bubbles that further shrink as they travel through the water, turning into nanobubbles. Using a microscope, let's take a closer look at how the bubbles shrink down to nano size. After a few minutes, the bubbles have gone from tens of microns to tens of nanometers. This is the carbon ceramic nozzle we saw earlier. The porous nature of the ceramic allows air to flow through. Apparently, it was impossible to produce nanobubbles with non-carbon-based ceramic. This system was developed not by a major company, but rather by a small factory run by Anzai Kantetsu. Their original technology has baffled many experts. There already existed several types of nanobubble systems, but all were complex and very costly. It wasn't too surprising that researchers were skeptical when they were first told that nanobubbles could be produced simply by sending air through a small ceramic nozzle. They never imagined it could be so easy. But demonstrations showed that nanobubbles remained in the water after the nozzle was taken out. The bubbles, which normally can't be seen with the naked eye, reflect light as they pass through a laser beam. Regular bubbles normally disappear quickly, but nanobubbles last for a long time, which is why they were detected by the laser. The researchers were convinced, and Anzai Kantetsu's discovery was put under the spotlight. According to developer Satoshi Anzai, their invention was the product of chance. で、the nozzle can be easily made in a multitude of sizes and shapes. This is particularly useful for adapting the technology for large-scale applications, such as the diffusion of nanobubbles at the bottom of the sea. また大きな海域とか、大きな河川で発生をするには大量の機械が必要になってしまいます。また大きなエネルギーを必要としますので、もっと具体的に言えば高いプレッシャーであったりとか、大きな核反するためのモーターであったりっていうものが必要になるんです
一番生物が住んでいるのは実はあの海の底ボトムなんですねそのボトムに空気を送るためには、えー、自分の力で縮んでしまう泡ですねでその縮んだ泡が海流に乗って、えー、ヘドロの中に染み込んでいくというようなこういった泡で、えー、浄化するという浄化といいますかそういった生物たちに酸素を届けてあげるというのが非常に有効だと思います。A series of experiments took place in the sea near an aquarium, also in Yokohama in 2013. This is a hundred square meter area near the mouth of Tokyo Bay, with sludge piled up 50 centimeters thick at the bottom. The nanobubble device was installed on the seabed eight meters below the surface, with a long tube to supply air from above. The system is very energy efficient, working on 2200 watt current. The white jet of bubbles coming out of the nozzle turns into smaller bubbles that, instead of going up, are dispersed around the bottom. Samples collected in February contain sandworms and small clams, two organisms commonly found in polluted waters. But in July, there were fewer shellfish, and some species of small shrimp were found in larger numbers. Arthropods like shrimp cannot survive in environments that are poor in oxygen. In half a year, the system had begun to show positive results. At the end of the experiment in January 2014, the aquatic life in the area had significantly changed. Various types of fish were observed near the reef. And seaweed had grown around the device. The sludge's thickness hadn't changed, but its content was different. Its surface had become porous like a sponge, and various organisms were found living inside. The nano bubbles had changed the ecosystem near the seabed. Tokyo Wan, to you, sir, this is the most poor city. Well, from the beginning of the year, from the beginning of the year, the sludge was not swimming in the environment. 落ちっているのが現状ですね。我々の出すゴミと言われているものが実はその微生物の世界でありそういったものに有効であるというのを証明できれば、えー、我々人類も自然の中で共存して生きていける社会ができるんじゃないかと思っています。Bubbles that shrink and remain underwater for a long time. Nanobubble technology is quite intriguing. The company's original and simple ceramic nozzle system can be adapted to a variety of situations. And there are plenty of sea regions around the world that could benefit from their invention, which can help bring back abundance and diversity to aquatic life across the globe. This simple little piece of ceramic could end up having a big impact on our oceans. As scientists learn more about the complex dynamics of climate change, declining oxygen levels in seawater are becoming more of a concern. Nanobubbles might be one way to blow some life back into the world's largest ecosystem. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us. Tune in again next time when we'll introduce you to even more great gear. Until then, I'm Matthew Masada Baron. Deva.